Welcome back to my shop. We've got a great one in store for you tonight. So it might surprise you to know that I often, uh, you know, I don't script none of this. I often use several clips to try to explain what I'm trying to say. So rather than fumbling through my words, I took the liberty of drawing this out in CAD. Okay, so I'm pretty new to the whole uh, CAD thing, you know. Uh, this is a pretty old laptop. Uh, and lots of the dimensions aren't exactly perfect, but... You know, you'll get the overall idea. Yeah, so as you can see, this is my plan of attack here. Uh, you know, we're going to make a sleeve that screws into uh, these ends here. And uh, this can actually, you know, that can be any any length I want. Like that could be actually, I was planning on making that stick out about another inch. And then, of course, uh, the fingers, I guess is what we'll call them. The fingers with a keyway and that's gonna the screwy thingy here is gonna keep that from spinning when we're uh, and that's the brass knob in there obviously is gonna keep that from spinning when this knob is turning and that's gonna keep the, the screwy thing other screwy thingy from uh, coming out of the dealie here and uh, of course the knob to help turn it and there's gonna be a little little hole there for roll pin and uh, well, actually, it doesn't seem as complicated as I thought. But that's the basic idea. You know, that the dimensions aren't overly accurate. But uh, you get the idea. I may not have mentioned this before, but I did take measurements on all these bores for these fingers. And uh, the 4140 that I was going to use before, uh, well, it's going to be too... It's too sloppy. Like, that's, that's way too sloppy. So, I actually uh, picked up board gauges or telescopic gauges and all that stuff and measured them out and uh yeah they were like eight thou difference between all three of them so what i did i picked up a hand reamer and uh well i already tried it on a couple holes and i gotta tell you those slivers that come out of there they're a thing of nightmares don't uh you might not want to you might want to avoid Trying to wipe these off with your bare hands. Just saying. Cause yeah, trying to see, trying to see some of those little slivers are uh, are pretty nasty. All right, folks, now that they're all drilled and got a few pieces all drilled and, uh, and uh, you know, centered out or whatever, honestly, this might seem a little ridiculous, but uh, I don't know, maybe it doesn't, but this seems to be the only way I can get it concentric with both sides. There has to be the same thread on both sides of that, you know, with a five, I'm, I'm going to go with five eighths of a inch of space in here. And I've actually tried this a few times and... A few different ways. Now, this may surprise you to know, but I'm not a machinist. Uh, maybe an aspiring hobby machinist. Anyways, these are the parts I made first. Uh, I tried to make first, I should say. Uh, you know, and maybe I'm just being nitpicky. Or, I don't know. But I th it seems like the champ, like when I was spinning them back in the chuck, they didn't seem on center very good. And one I reamed out first, and I probably should have left. Like this is the one I reamed already, I think. I reamed it while I was in the lathe. And honestly, it, they might have worked out. I tried to even champ for that one before I stuck it on the on the uh, which call it in between centers. But then, then I looked at that, and the chamfer didn't seem quite 
quite even or something like that in some of these. So then I was just like, well, fuck it. You know, I'm not going to even bother chamfering it. I'm just going to stick it in there real tight <laughs> and hope for the best. Yeah, so, so there's been a few failures. And a nice crazy heaping pile of drill chips. I really need a bigger steel bin. Okay, so I'm just going to turn this concentric. And then we're going to take off 5 eighths off each side. And we'll swap dogs once we uh, get one side done. Alright, so now that we got that part established, should, in theory, be able to uh, do the same thing on both sides without moving this. Once we get our zero established here, so I'm just going to touch off right there. So zero. What, that's our first zero. And what I want to do is go in uh, 9 sixteenths, I guess, or 5, 0.525 or something like that. Anyways. Okay, lock our carriage right there. Over again. Oop. Oop, too far. Okay. And that, in theory, should be our zero for both both ends. Now we can just flip the part. And get the exact same thread dimension. Oh, I'm really sitting up here. The wrong thing. <laughs> and we should get the exact same thread dimension on both ends now. Hang on. The parting tool still kind of freaks me out. I got to put a gullet in there about 36 thou deep. And I'll just get it the very way we touch against that. I'm just skimming. Walk the carriage. <laughs> yeah, I hate this part. Well, try to get my. It's like staying behind this shit anyway. But where we want right there. We'll watch the dial. Ten. Twenty. Thirty. Six. Well at thirty six. Actually, I gotta say that's the smoothest that's ever gone. <laughs> Ooh, that freaks me. Still freaks me out, guys. Still freaks me right out. Okay, so we're gonna move over and make that a little bit bigger just to accommodate my threading tool. 
about there, no particular size. Plus, I should be able to double check my measurement now, too. I wasn't really looking. <laughs> looking at the work, not the dial. Oh, yeah, there's our touch off. Yeah, we're pretty close. There's 10. 20. 30. Seven right there. Jeez, that looked down really damn good. So we can't clean that up just a sketch. I'm wrecking nothing. Uh, yeah. Alright, there's our freaking thread gullet. Well, that worked terrific. I was glad to catch that one on camera. <laughs> Alright, we're all set up here to do a scratch pass. Give a little paint job here. Get the gear set up for a 16 threads per inch. Got the compound set for 29 and a half degrees. Tool is all square to the work. There's our scratch. Okay. Now, we need to release the screw and uh, push through the opposite direction this time. And we should be able to do it on any notch here. Check, look, see here if I can get this in there. 16 threads per inch. And well, it's kind of a precarious spot here. Yeah, we should be good to go. Okay, we should be getting very close there. That was 35 thousandths or something like that. Uh, I'm going to have to check it out on the actual piece itself, I guess. Here's the other piece we made. And I'm hoping this uh, remains repeatable after this. I'm pretty sure we got a bit to go yet, though. Yeah, it's a little bit tight, I bet, and a couple more thou, and a few, you know, scratch pass will do it. All right, well, I'm going to finish this off, and I'll, you know, and I'll just, I'm going to be switching this, this around in this thing. I'll, I'm going to most likely, uh, I'll put a piece of copper or something in there to protect the threads, and uh, just to keep the dog from marring them all up. I'm just doing little passes, but I'm going to keep doing this. You guys seen threading before, so I'm just going to go ahead and thread those up. And I'll be back to you in a short while. All right, well that part is done. I'm not going to lie, it took a little bit of figuring and uh, accommodating to get these to work. Like, uh, because of the, due to the tap being tapered and wall and, and having a bit of a angle on the bottom. I uh, had to make some accommodations to make that work out good. But so far, she's uh, working out pretty nice. Snug that up with a little Loctite, maybe even later. But uh, all the holes seem to be lining up really good. We're going to ream those out too. So I guess that's the next item of business. 
I got the drawer open underneath there with the with some padding under there so when this, if this falls through which it probably will it uh, won't damage nothing I don't know if you knew before like these were already reamed so I'm just kind of gonna follow it through there and hopefully it all works out kind of new to the whole reaming process Normally you'd use a tap wrench, but I won't got the room for it this time around. Chunky. I think I'm started there nice. Just that first little bit that's kind of... There's a lot of oil too if I can. All right, so we should be hitting the, the good bits now. Hopefully this makes for a nice straight hole. And this is not like a tap. You gotta turn them all in, always in a clockwise direction. Otherwise you'll be, uh, Destroying your reamer, and they're pretty expensive from what I've gathered. They ain't, they ain't freaking cheap. So far, so good. down there and nice and straight starting to look like something now all right so I guess we can check that off the list sleeve check well folks this is getting to be kind of a long one so I think we're gonna have to call this <laughs> part four of the steady rest build and uh, take it up a little more next time next weekend in the meantime, you guys have a great evening uh, or day, depending on what part of the world you're at. And uh, I'll see you next time. Peace out.